Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners today we will be starting with the new unit that is unit 4 of the course and the title of this unit is open economy now this unit will give you a view as to when an any an economy it interacts with the rest of the world then what impact does it have on that economy the topic of today's lecture is on international flow of goods and capital what are we going to discuss in this lecture let's have a look at it so the outline of the lecture would be like this we will be first introducing you to the basic concepts of open economy certain preliminaries to the open economy then we will understand that how the goods and capital in an economy flows thereafter we will understand the relationship between saving investment and these international flows so let's see first of all in order to understand all these aspects of open economy it is pertinent that we understand that what is the difference between an open and a closed economy when we talk about a closed economy we say it is a one which does not interact with the other economies of the world that it is a closed economy means that there is no kind of interaction this economy has with the any other economy of the world or with the rest of the world what kind of interaction maybe it is not exporting any goods it is not importing any goods neither it is engaging into any type of capital flow so there is basically no mobility of the goods and services or of any type of capital so that economy is known as a closed economy as i said a closed economy is a one where there are no exports no imports and no capital flow whereas when we talk about an open economy it is an economy which is interacting freely with the other economies around the world that is this economy has certain kind of international trade relations with the rest of the world this economy when we are talking about an open economy it is interacting with the other countries through transactions through what transaction the transaction may be in the world goods market or the transactions may be in the world's financial market means interaction is going on that is we are seeing exchange of not only goods but also the financial products or what we call as financial capital so the broad difference between the closed and the open economy means is the one where in a closed economy this economy is not having any kind of international relations in terms of trade in terms of flow of capital with the rest of the world whereas in an open economy we see these interactions take place between this economy and the rest of the world you are right if you are thinking that where is a closed economy in these days you don't see any closed economy in current circumstances because every country whether it is a small country whether it is a large country whether it is an advanced country or it is a lesser developed country all countries some way or the other are interacting with the rest of the economies of the world there is no economy which is operating is remaining in isolation so what we will be hence for hence for talking about is the open economy another impact once we have understood that what is an open economy another important thing that we need to understand is the difference between a small open economy and a large open economy an open economy which is interacting with the rest of the world may be classified into a small one or a large one now let us understand the difference between a small and a large open economy when you say a small open economy we say this is such an economy which takes its own rate of interest the rate of interest its 
financial market is having that rate of interest is derived or it is taken from the world financial markets why because by its virtue of its size this economy has a negligible impact on the world economies so whatever the rate of interest is is in the small economy it is derived or it is taken from the world financial markets the reason being that this economy is so small that it can make negligible impact in the world financial markets also in a small open economy there is free flow of capital in and out of this domestic economy that is there is no restriction on the flow of capital that is capital can flow in this economy come in this economy or it can go out of this economy without any restrictions so that is the characteristic of a small open economy whereas when you talk about a large open economy we say it is the one which can influence its own domestic interest rates and also has a substantial impact on the world market particularly on the world's interest rate that is this economy is so large that it is not only determining its own interest rates but it is also having an impact on the rate of interest in the world's financial market we have already seen that how this interest rate is determined when we talked about the ISLM model so what we are saying in this case is that large economy is such a big economy that it not only determines its own domestic rate of interest but it also has an impact on the world financial market and there are restrictions on the flow of free flow of capital in a large open economy unlike a small open economy where the there was no restriction on the flow of capital in a large open economy there are of course there is a movement of capital that that movement of capital may be restricted it may be governed by certain rules why this can be because of the domestic investment preferences maybe because this large economy feels that investment should stay in its own country rather than money traveling to the other parts of the world so the basic difference between small and large open economy we have seen is that small small open economy will not have any impact on the world's financial market it will derive its interest rate from the interest rate which is determined by the large open economy also in a small open economy there is free flow of capital in and out of this economy whereas in a large open economy there are certain restrictions taking place on the free flow of capital in the domestic market now once we have seen that there are interactions in an open economy in a small open economy as well in as a large open economy it will be very interesting to note that how these movements of both in the factor market that is the in the sorry in the trade market and in the financial market how does it have an impact on the national income so now we will be talking about national income and the trade balance that is we will be having a look at the interaction in the world's product market as we have just said in an open economy which is interacting with the rest of the world it is not necessary that spending becomes equal to output if you remember the unit 1 there we had talked about the circular flow of income we had seen that income travels from one sector to another and from that sector the income goes back in form of expenditure or spending on to be on the goods and services which are being produced so we had seen that the circular flow of income gets completed there also we had talked about things like leakages in form of savings and imports but when we are talking about in an open economy it is not essential or it is not necessary that whatever output is being produced everything is being sold in the domestic economy only or the spending 
in the economy may not be equal to the total output produced in that economy. This happens because there is interaction with the rest of the world. If the spending is more in this economy means the citizens of that economy are purchasing goods from the other countries of the world. They are spending more than what has been produced. Where are they spending? They are spending on the domestic output as well as they are importing certain things and on that they are making the spending. So, in the product market we see that the spending may not be equal to output in case of an open economy. Similarly, saving may also not be equal to the investment. That is, we are talking about the financial market. In order to understand let us go back to the equation of GDP that we have already talked about in your first and the second unit. We have said that gross domestic product or GDP can be written as Y is equal to C plus I plus D plus net exports where C represents the consumption of the households. Now if we are talking about this open economy this consumption will not be only the consumption on the domestically produced goods, but this consumption will also be on the foreign produced goods. So, C would is the summation of consumption on the domestic goods plus the consumption on the foreign goods. Similarly, I which is the investment in the economy will also be compos composing of the domestic investment spending and the investment from the foreign goods. Similarly, government spending is also divided both the sector. Then NX, NX you remember, NX is basically net exports which is equal to exports of the country minus the imports of the country. So, in order to understand that how in an open economy this particular identity changes or what implication it has let us move forward but just keep in mind this equation because we will be doing a lot of operations on these equations to derive very interesting results. So, y is equal to c plus i plus d plus net exports. So, this is the equation this national income identity we will be using. To understand that why it happens that spending in an economy may not be equal to its output and if it happens then what implication does it have for the economy. So, this equation we have already seen y is equal to c plus i plus d plus net exports. We will rearrange this equation such that you can write you take on your c plus i plus d from the right hand side of the equation to the left hand side of the equation. So, it will become y minus c minus i minus d but we have put it in the bracket. So, we are saying y that is the total output or GDP minus c that is consumption spending, investment spending and the government spending. When this C plus I plus D we can together call it as domestic spending. Why? Because we are talking about the spending which is being done in the economy by the three sectors that is households, firms and the government sector. Why we have already said is the output that is the total output being produced in the economy and NX is the net exports. So, using this identity what are we getting learners? We are saying that the net exports in the economy that is exports minus imports. What does net exports show? Basically, it is showing the interaction of the domestic economy with the rest of the world. What is export? Export is something which is manufactured in the domestic economy but it is being sold to the rest of the world. Similarly, what are imports? Imports is something which has been produced in some other part of the world but it is being consumed in this particular economy. So, exports minus imports is giving us net exports. What is this net export saying? That net exports in an economy is equal to the total output which is being produced in the economy minus the total expenditure which is being done by the various sectors. Okay. Now, what does it show further? 
This particular equation just which we have seen is will give us two things. One, it will help us to explain the trade surplus and it will also help us to explain the trade deficits. We have just said that net exports which is equal to exports minus imports is given as Y that is the total output minus in the bracket C plus I plus G that is C plus I plus G represents the total spending in the economy, domestic spending in the economy. That amount we are subtracting from the total output. So, net exports is equal to output produced minus the spending done. We have already said that in an open economy, it is not necessary that whatever has been produced will be consumed or whatever is being consumed is the same as what has been produced. So, if your net exports, which we are saying, let us say your output is Y, if this output is greater than this spending, for example, the total output produced in India is let us say 100 million rupee value of output is 100 million rupees and the total spending let us say is 80 million rupees means your output was more whereas your spending was less. So, when your output is more than spending this figure will be positive. So, your net exports will become positive. It basically means is that if you are producing more but spending less means you have certain excess amount with uh, amount of goods available with you. What are you going to do with it? You are going to export it. So, your exports will be greater than the imports that you are making. So, whenever exports are more than imports, we call it as trade surplus. So, if your output is more than spending, that is Y is greater than C plus I plus G put together. And when we subtract the output from this output, when we subtract the spending, if this value is positive, this means your net exports are also positive. Hence, we will say that in such a case, the trade surplus has occurred. On the other hand, if your spending has been more, if you are spending more, but you are, the country has produced less, what does this mean? This means that people have spent on the goods which have not been produced in this country, but which have been imported from the rest of the world. So, when your spending represented by C plus I plus G is greater than the level of output Y, this means your imports have been more than exports. So, if your imports are more than exports, this means your net exports will be negative. If for example, I am saying that you are importing something of 10 rupees, but exporting something of 8 rupees means your spending is more, your imports are more than exports, your spending is more than your output. Then in such a case, you will have what is called as a trade deficit. So, a trade deficit is represented by negative exports. So, what we see here learners is that from the basic identity of aggregate demand or GDP that is Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus net exports, we are seeing that this translates into an understanding of the economy such that to know whether there is a trade surplus in the economy or there is a trade deficit. The second type of interaction the economy has with the rest of the world is with respect to capital. That is, it is also interacting with the world financial market. What we have seen till now is, we have seen the interaction in the world product market where we were talking about exports of goods and exports of services. And then we were seeing that what impact did it have on the economy. But we also know that in due after globalization, it is not only the goods and services which are traveling between the economies, it is also the capital which is traveling between the economies. So, any type of international borrowing and lending, that is, if the residents of one country are borrowing from another country of the world, that is international borrowing. 
similarly if residents of a country are lending to the residents of an or the companies of another country it is called as international lending so international borrowing and lending together are known as international capital flows as we know unlike a closed economy with the model which we drew in the first unit we had said that savings will become equal to investment but in an open economy this is not true because of the flow of capital between economies it may so happen that savings may be more than investments or saving may be less than investment so saving is equal to investment may not be true in case of an open economy why because savers people who have excess can lend money not only to domestic borrowers but they can lend money to the foreigner foreign borrowers as well similarly firms they in order to finance their investment may not only borrow from domestic savers they may also tap the foreign markets to borrow these funds so the identity of saving equal to investment may not be true in case of when we are talking about an open economy so now let us see that how this happens so in order to understand your saving investment and international capital flow we will again go back to the basic equation of gdp that is y is equal to c plus i plus d plus net exports see this equation is such an important equation of your macroeconomics we have been using it extensively so y is equal to c plus i plus d plus net exports we will rearrange this equation such that you say why now you what you are going to do is you are going to bring this consumption and the government expenditure to the left hand side of the equation and we will keep investment and net exports as it is on the right hand side of the equation so you will this particular equation y is equal to c plus i plus d plus net exports can be also written as y minus c minus d and that becomes equal to net exports plus investment that is you are bringing c and g to the left hand side of the equation now why are we doing it because this y minus c minus c what is c minus g c what is c c is consumption expenditure what is g g is government expenditure y is what y is your income or output so if you deduct the value of the expenditure that is c consumption expenditure and g which is government expenditure from the total aggregate income or output of the economy what will we get we will get what is called as national savings simple example for this is for example as a household you are earning income of 100 rupees your consumption expenditure is of 80 rupees so 100 minus 80 becomes our saving right you we did it in the first unit that disposable income y is equal to c plus s that is s is equal to y minus c so that when you are just taking households so y minus c that is this is the consumption expenditure of the households g is the government expenditure so if out of the total income that is y of the economy when we subtract c consumption expenditure and the government expenditure the residue that is left is called as national saving so this y minus c minus d can be written as capital s where capital s we have just said is what national saving this national saving s is equal to net exports plus i this equation can be further rearranged to say that s minus i that is you are now bringing this investment to your left hand side of the equation so s minus i will be equal to net exports so what does this equation show this is showing that the net exports of the country is equal to saving minus investment saving minus investment is also known as net capital outflow why because savings are something maybe if you are investing out not only lending a uh, saving within the country but you are also 
uh, you know saving in other instruments floated by other countries of the world you are taking money or you are lending money to them as a saver so that will be a capital outflow investment is something which the firms bring in so this investment we have already seen these firms will borrow not only from domestic sources but may also borrow from foreign sources so this investment will generate into capital inflow so outflow in forms of saving minus inflow in form of investment will give us s minus i will give us net capital outflow so net cap according to this equation the net exports of the country should be such that saving minus investment net is net capital outflow becomes equal now this particular equation will give you very interesting results we'll see but certain analysis can be done certain interpretation can be done on this basic equation that is net exports is equal to saving minus investment net exports is equal to s minus i what relations we can draw first this particular in, uh, equation implies that in an economy net exports given by nx must be equal to the difference of saving minus investment nx is equal to s minus i means in an economy to be in equilibrium the net exports should be equal to the net capital outflow what is net exports it is exports minus imports what is saving minus investment we have named it as net capital outflow so this equation implies that in economy to be in equilibrium its net exports should be equal to s minus i or net capital outflow if this s is greater than i if the savings are more than investment then the country will see that there is a trade surplus or the trade balance will be in positive just keep that equation in mind that is s minus i is equal to nx if s is more than i this means the residue net capital outflow is positive so your net exports will be positive if the saving is less than investment then the net exports will be negative or there will be a trade deficit what implication we can draw learners from this a very interesting implication here is those countries which are running a trade deficit are also those countries which are running a situation of where their saving is less than investment that is they are also the borrowers of funds if a country has a greater trade deficit it implies the in that country the rate of saving is less than the rate of investment or in other words we can also say that the international flows of capital represented by s and i and the international flow of goods and services represented by net exports are the two sides of the same coin it is not that that the international capital market is totally totally isolated or segregated from the world product market there is a relationship between the capital market and the goods market we can just see this we i will just summarize this particular identity both the identities that we have done that is net exports is equal to saving minus investment in this table so that you can uh, comprehend in a better way let us see this table we have already talked about three things let us say we start with the balance trade trade balance where your net exports are equal to savings minus investment in such a case if your s is equal to i this means your net exports will become zero and your whatever is being produced in the economy in terms of y it becomes equal to the spending that is whatever the country is producing the same amount it is consuming or it is spending its spending becomes equal to the total level of output also we have just said in the financial market the savings are just equal to the investment 
because savings are equal to the investment whatever the savers amount savers are saving exact amount is being borrowed by the firms there will be a zero net capital outflow so in this is an very very idealistic situation with the trade to be balanced but the other two situation one is a situation of trade surplus what do we mean by trade surplus trade surplus means that your exports are more than your imports so your net exports are greater than zero what is net exports exports minus imports so your exports are more than imports therefore your net exports are positive also this means that you have produced more y and spent less on it means therefore the economy had an excess of production and it was able to export so your y that is your total aggregate output was more than the aggregate spending in terms of c plus i plus g so your net exports were positive because you produced the country produced more domestically and consumed less also in such a case we have just seen that when net exports is positive this also indicates that the savings have been more than the investment when there is a trade surplus your savings are more than the investment that is people are saving more than what the firms are investing in therefore it what will these excess savings do these excess saving will travel to the other economies of the world therefore we will see net capital outflow to be positive because the savers feel that the demand for their funds is less so they will not confine themselves only to their economy they will start investing in the foreign assets so they will become lender they will become international lenders so in the in such an economy the net capital outflow will be greater than zero then we see the last situation of a deficit in trade trade deficit means when the country is running a situation where net exports are negative net exports negative means the country is having lesser exports than its imports or in simple words imports are more than the exports when will this happen if we are saying that if we are importing more means we are spending more than what we are producing so therefore in such a situation your aggregate output is less than the aggregate expenditure why therefore we are importing no when you are spending more spending more where because you are producing the country has produced less now in order to fulfill the demand the country will have to import these goods and services from rest of the world so the expenditure domestic expenditure of this country is more than the output so they are importing more hence their net exports become negative or less than zero in the financial market the implication of net exports would mean that the savings are less than the investments people are saving less why another side of coin is that because they are spending more hence they are saving less so savings are less than the investment so what is happening here is that probably we are seeing less savings are reduced and investment going more so you will see net capital outflow to be negative and then this identity will be maintained so this is very important lesson that we get so what all we have discussed in this lecture we have said that this economy any economy of the world can be divided into closed and open economy an open economy can be a small open economy or a large open economy and in such a situation what will happen is that your uh, in a small open economy the rate of interest of this economy is dependent on the rate of interest of the large open economy we have already seen the difference then we said that you talk about in an open economy the net exports and net capital outflow are closely linked we have just seen this equation nx is equal to s minus i so if an economy has to be another balanced situation then your net exports are equal to your net capital outflow nx is equal to s minus i so learners this is just the preliminary introduction of the open economy
in the subsequent lectures that we will do we will see that how uh, the impact of various policies like fiscal and monetary policy have an impact on the economic your inter economic equilibrium till then happy learning